four-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, 103 career sacks. All oh, those four quarterbacks back in the day where the NFL was a real thing. Let's welcome in proud mullet man, Vikings legend, and apparently F1 race car driver who just got home. Jared Allen, how are you? Appreciate it. I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm great. Where are, you, where are you driving in from? Oh, I was actually coming back from curling practice and uh, got behind some slow drivers. So, you know, I didn't want I want to be punctual, but I want to be safe as well. We got to get into the curling of all of this. Um, and let's just do that. Yeah, let's just do that. Where is the curling part of this? Um, you're we have some breaking news to get to, by the way. I don't know that we'll be breaking to you because you'll be been in, in the, the thick of it, of course. But um, OK, you and we're in Bern, Switzerland. It's, I just want to get it right. The Consolation Cup, right? In the Curling Grand Prix. Talk to me about this. Your goal is to compete in the next Winter Olympics in curling. Where do you stand in reaching the goal? Um, well, I mean, we're on track. I think we have a good chance of making the, uh, the Olympic trials. So, you know, once that's, that's step one, right, is making the Olympic trials and then going from there. So right now our team is qualified for nationals. Uh, so we actually got to go up to uh, Morris, Manitoba this weekend. Okay. For a nice... Beautiful place, Morris, Manitoba. If people should try and check that out. I've never been there, but I hear just they rave about it. Uh, one coffee shop, one curling club, one hotel. So just book, book ahead of time is all I'm saying. Uh, we got to go <laughs> get that. Um, but other than that, yeah, we, we're probably qualified for nationals. Uh, hopefully we'll stay on national goals, you know, hopefully win that um, podium at least. But, you know, I think uh, we have a good team. We uh, we know our competition. We've played them a lot. we got to get, you know, keep getting better and better and better. And, uh See what happens if we when we get into the tournament. Then it's a winner take all. Some dudes take up golf. Some do. I mean, and you're you're just you're out there trying to make the Olympics. I give you a lot of credit. It's amazing. You're an absolute legend. I like literally get chills talking to you. Truly. And I don't know if you, I mean I'm sure you know this. Your phone must have blown up with the announcement this morning that the 2024 Pro Football Hall of Fame semis were announced. Uh, breaking news to you. Your fourth time making it, of course, this far in the process. I uh, did, did not know that came out today. So appreciate you telling me that. Uh, <laughs> You know what they say, uh, fourth time is a charm, I think. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the bridesmaid, right? I was always a bridesmaid, never the bride. So I'm just kind of like, hey, we'll keep taking it as it comes. Last time I talked to you, and it was a little over a year ago, you said, it, sure, it'd be great to get in. That's fine. Uh, but it wouldn't make your kids love you more. I love that line. I remember that. You said, you know, you still have to, you know, pick up the dog crap in the yard, I believe is what you said. But, yep, yep. I mean, I mean, you came, yeah, you came in on a horse when you were inducted to the Vikings Ring of Honor. What do you have cooked up if you get into Ken? Are we doing like a curling oh, spin? Man. What are we doing? Oh, we'll do something cool. I don't know, maybe like a top uh, Trans Am or something like that. Just <laughs> let, the, you know, let the salad flow. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll come up with something cool if they, uh, maybe that's why they're not letting me in. They don't want to see the antics, you know? Maybe they're afraid of what of what may transpire with all this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to do something cool. It would be, be legendary. We love that. Now, last night, your Vikings. They took it to my Bears like you did for so many years. Um, and they tried to get a win. They couldn't. The Bears win. They made things more interesting. The wild card race as well. It was sort of a defensive battle, low-scoring game, kind of weird. What did you see out there with Dobbs? Because he, like, turned into a pumpkin in front of my eyes. Was it more about him melting down or whatever? Or was it? Are we going to give credit to the Bears' defense this morning? We got, I mean, first of all, we got, I mean, you got like, three of those were tipped. Well, I mean, Okay. One, the one interception was, was a great throw by Dobbs, right? Addison just drops it over the middle. Um, the other one's tip. The guy makes a good play. So you can't really take two of those. Uh, two of them were just bad decisions, right? A bad throw in that. Then he was like a little seven round. And then the other one just takes the sack. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think like anything, again, I, I don't know Dobbs. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, you look at the resurgence of Geno Smith. So I think yeah. people are trying to look for reasons to to elevate people past maybe what their ability is or where they're currently at in their career. Um, so I think he had a hiccup, right? Um, so, you know, people acting like, oh, oh, here it is. The Cinderella story is over. You know, I, that, that happens in the NFL. You give, A, you give defensive coordinators enough time to get enough film on you and study you. They're going to they're gonna try to trap you into uh, what your weaknesses are. Um, B, I mean – you know, guys are going to have bad games. Unfortunately, it happened on Monday Night Football. Uh, see, I think it was a defensive battle. I mean, he, he you know, he, he moved okay in the pocket, but he was throwing some stuff under pressure. Um, and and then, you know, lack of a, lack of a run game, to be honest with you. I mm. think you got to give it to the Bears defense is that, you know, they controlled the line of scrimmage. Um, they stopped the run well. 
And, you know, you make a quarterback who's not, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of starting experience and you make them be one dimensional. Now you can pin your ears back and you do things, you know, coverage wise, you're behind the chain. So, um, you know, I, I actually like the game. I love watching defensive battles. I was a little sad that uh, the Vikings kind of backed off there at the end of the game. Um, mm. But, you know, again, I think I think people are going to read too much of it. I think the Vikings will come back. I think Dobbs will be OK. I think, you know, coach will. um We'll pull them back together and, and you know kind of simplify things to get back to doing what what they did to, to win. What do they do with Kirk Cousins? What should they do? Um, what's his contract? I mean, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot. There's that's, that's a lot to unpack. Do we have enough time? Um, Make it quick. We got lots to talk about. I mean, a blow you blow your Achilles out at this point in your career. I'm just. I think. I mean, I think there's just it's, it's a young man's game. It's going that way. Um, I don't know that you can invest that much more money to it would take to keep them. To be honest. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it has any bearing on his ability, uh, but you're going to come off an injury, and I don't know what his contract situation is or Master how much you're going to pay deal. him. Oh, you can't pay him. That's just it's a no-brainer. You can't pay him. Uh, sorry, Kurt. Uh, it's not, <laughs> not nothing personal. Nothing personal at all. But I mean, it's as, as a fan, if I'm the GM, you got you know you're not going to you don't what are you going to have to pay him? Twenty five, thirty million yeah, a year. You know he has. He just wants. Yeah, you're right. And then <laughs> sorry, you're tired Kurt. Up. You can't do it. Sorry, it's, it's the ride's done. Sorry, I mean he's he's done okay. He's he's done okay. Yeah, They're probably gonna go with with a rookie or some other way. He's got gold crutches right now. He's doing yeah. just fine. Let me ask you this, Tom Brady. I don't know if you saw this. You see him come out and like take it to take uh, take the NFL to task. You see this? Yeah, I heard about it. I, I read I read a quote or something. Um, what do you think? You know what? I, I, I think, I think we all are those players, right? You know, the old guys when we were playing, ah, oh, the league's changed, it's soft, guys making too much money. I, I'm like, oh, imagine if I played it today, is how many, you know, you're making 100 plus million a year. Um, so I think every generation kind of does that. I, I think there's still some good football players out there. Uh, football's still a, a tough, it's always an evolving sport. Um, so is it, is it the football that we played? No. Uh, has it changed? Yes. Do I think certain, certain position groups oh, are less talent not less talented but you know a different dynamic like i like, take tackles for example i don't i don't think the the offensive tackles are what they were when we played because you still had 330 plus pound 40 pound guys you're still you know marty ball was a thing power football yeah. you had three tight ends right so the game has evolved therefore the players have evolved with this so i think it's hard to judge about that so I think there's some validity to what he says, but there's other stuff where I think it's just kind of it's a different game and it's a different generation. Wow. And these people are gripe and bitch about Jared, the next I thought generation. you were going to come and eviscerate. I mean, I'm just, if you were getting some of those roughing the passer calls, I, I don't know that I you're going to be like, I think the roughing the passer calls is garbage. I think that is absolute garbage. I've said that. But I don't think you can take the whole NFL to task over yeah. that. I mean. Who's the best pass rusher in the game right now? Oh, man. You'd be, I mean, obviously, I'm biased. I think that Neil Hunter's up there. Um Miles Garrett, I'm a huge fan of Miles Garrett. So I really am. Um, so good. And then, um, you know, I, I just think I, I think you should watch it because it's not just the pass rush thing. I mean, that guy's on the field every single down, and that's what I like about it. Love that. All right, your charity, Homes for Wounded Warriors, guys. So much ways, so many ways to raise money. You've raised over two hundred twenty thousand as part of the Mullet Championship. You made mullets cool before. I did. There's some kids all across the country in LA wearing some, Jack Harlow's wearing a dumb mullet. You're the mullet yeah. man, baby. I we just love got it. Just my first cut too. We love it. 